Hey guys, this is Mike with another episode from our series on doing syntax searching in Logos Bible software. In this lesson, we're going to be diving a bit more in depth as we begin to look at multi-level Hebrew syntax structures and queries, so hold on tight as we get ready to dive in. In the previous videos, we looked primarily at word-level query building. The goal of that was to show how to read a syntax graph and how to add nodes into a syntax query builder. Due to the simplicity of these queries, we were able to go through the whole process of building the query from scratch. Due to the complexity of multi-level queries, we will not have the time to walk through building every aspect. Instead, we're going to start with an already built search and reverse engineer it to show how the search can be replicated or even find places where the existing query can be improved. The first Hebrew query that I want to look at is called the call to attention. You can see the query here. Feel free to pause the video and make your own copy of this query. Let's run this search and take a look at some of the results. Genesis 49.2 says, Assemble and hear, O sons of Jacob. If we scroll down a bit more, we find a search result for Deuteronomy 6.4, which says, Hear Israel. Finally, scroll down a bit more to Isaiah 1.10. This says, Hear the word of Yahweh, rulers of Sodom. In all of these instances, we have the verb Shema in the imperative form paired with the vocative in the same clause. How are we able to get there? Let's take a look at the visual query that we built to look a bit deeper. Click on the search result from Isaiah 1.10 in order to open the Anderson Forbes phrase marker analysis. Make sure to position this resource in a parallel panel to our search query. In the phrase marker analysis, notice that we have a clearly marked clause that consists of clause immediate constituents, or kicks, of verb and vocative. If we follow the line from the verbal node, we see that the verb on the word level of this clause is the Hebrew verb shema in the imperative mood. If we look at our syntax construction, notice that we have a verbal node, just like in the phrase marker analysis, followed by a segment or word node with the morphological data for the imperative form of Shema. The line that connects them is dotted. This dotted line stands for a command called matching skips levels. This means that there can be any number of nodes that exist between the verbal kick node and the actual segment node. Under the finite verb, we have another node for the vocative. What is interesting about this query is the use of the unordered node. We use this node because there are some instances that we are interested in where the vocative actually precedes the verb in the clause. By using the unordered node, we are telling Logos that the vocative and the verb can come in any order as long as they are contained in the same clause as is denoted by the use of the clause node to the far left in our query. Unordered nodes also allow for other information to appear in between the verb and the vocative. For instance, if we look at the result from Judges 9-7, we see in the phrase marker analysis that the indirect object appears in between the verb and the vocative. The unordered node accounts for this instance. Let's look at two more instances of multi-level Hebrew syntax searches. Maybe some of you have heard of the syntactical construction known as ellipsis. One particular kind of ellipsis is known as verbal ellipsis. This is when two clauses actually share the same verb. Of examples of verbal ellipsis, there are a couple of different types. There's forward verb ellipsis where the verb is contained in the preceding clause, while the following clause piggybacks or shares this same verb without explicitly using it again. One particular instance of this can be found in Isaiah 34.13. Notice how the first clause contains a verbal kick using the Hebrew verb Allah. The following clause also connects to this verbal idea, thus creating an instance of forward verb ellipsis. Backward verb ellipsis is just the other way around. We can find the instances of this occurrence using a multi-level syntax query. You can see the syntactic construction for forward ellipsis here. This is a fairly simple construction on face value but there is quite a bit of complexity going on behind the scenes to build this. This construction is looking for every place in the Anderson Forbes text where a clause appears composed of a finite verb kick as the first node in the clause. This verb will also have more than one parent node, for instance, a clause node branching into it. 
The verbal node is then followed by anything as well as a gap. I'm sure there are a lot of questions that are brewing up right now. Most important of these is probably what is parent count and what is a gap? Let's run this search and look at a couple of examples to explain these two functions in a Hebrew syntax search. If we use Genesis 4.23 as our first case example, this will start to look a bit clearer. In the phrase marker analysis toward the end of the verse, there are two clauses next to each other that both branch to the same child node. For your information, nodes to the left are called parents. The nodes that they connect to on the right are called child nodes. So in instances of verb ellipsis, there is one child with two or more parents. This is what we meant when we marked parent count as greater than one. We want verbal kick nodes that have more than one parent. Our search that we ran is actually finding the second clause of this pair in verse 23. Notice that the first node in the clause is the verbal kick. This kick is then followed by something called a gap. A gap is basically additional information from another clause, phrase, or sentence that intersects one child node from the other child nodes of the current clause, phrase, or sentence you're looking at. In this instance, there is a kick labeled as reason and a conjunction that intersect the verbal kick node and the rest of the nodes that are part of the clause. This intersecting information is what is known as a gap. In Genesis 3140, we actually have an example where two clauses share both a verb and the direct object. Our search finds this instance because, once again, we have the verbal kick as the first node of the clause, followed by anything, which in this instance is the direct object node, followed by a gap, which is populated by the subject from the previous clause and a conjunction. If we were interested in looking for backward verb ellipsis instead of forward verb ellipsis, we could use the following syntax structure instead. There are many additional multi-tiered syntax structures that we can build. There is no way to cover them all. What I hope to accomplish with this video is to show you some interesting examples that are not readily understood so that you can adopt what you learn here for other types of queries that you may want to build. When building multi-tiered syntax queries, remember to always start simple. From your search results, you can move to making your query more complex to hopefully account for outliers that didn't fit into your original query. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like down below. If you want to be aware of new video content as it's added, make sure to subscribe to the channel here. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos. Until next time.